Boom. Okay, everybody. This is David P. France. I'm coming to you live from Switzerland. I'm actually in Basel today. And um, today I'm speaking with Brandon Lawrence, who's a uh, dancer with the Birmingham Royal Ballet in Birmingham, United Kingdom. And uh, welcome. Welcome. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, David. How, how things, how things uh, in your neck of the woods in your part of the world? Um, at, at the moment, it's okay. It was really, really tricky um, to begin with. I mean, not that it's not tricky now, but um, just kind of adjusting to somehow doing a makeshift ballet class at home. And, you know, this, the, the, I had no idea what Zoom was before, um, you know, that it all kind of kicked in. And now I seem to be kind of a bit, you know, savvy on it. Um, but yeah, no, everything's okay. And um, we're still kind of social distancing, obviously, and it's still a little bit of a lockdown, um, kind of exercising as much as you want outside and uh, still trying to get your essentials when you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you and I met, what was it, about two years ago? Was it about two years ago? I think so, yeah, I think it was right. two years ago. Uh, I had participated in a, uh, how do you call it? Um, mm, it was a, a dance production, right? Mm. Um, with the uh, Dance Forms Production Company, which is uh, owned and organized by Su Susanna B. Williams yeah. out of Kentucky. And um, just so you get a background of how I even got involved, I got an email, I received an email via Facebook and uh, Susanna asked if I would be a part of this festival in Edinburgh. Mm. Um, I looked up online, it's like Edinburgh, what, you know, and I realized, oh, this is a big deal. So that just oh, so yeah. everybody knows, Edinburgh hosts, if not maybe the biggest, largest festival for arts yeah. in yeah, the, the world. Yeah, right. yeah. Absolutely huge. It runs for probably, what, about a month, two months or something right. like that. Mm. From what I understand, there's like, there's several festivals all at once, and the Fringe is one of those festivals that happen during the entire festival so you, you you basically can fly into edinburgh and really watch and do all kinds of things comedy oh, uh trapeze <laughs> right yeah. burlesque everything everything dance acting play everything <laughs> right and i met you I, I had already participated in um susanna's uh festival i think it was maybe a year or so before and mm. she had been working with you uh, specifically um, for a performance, I think it was 2017, right? Mm. Something like Something this, 2019. Like well, no, uh, two years in a row. I'm trying uh -huh. to think, I wonder if I, I don't know if it was the year or the second year I met you. Yes, um, I think it was 2018, 19 that you did. Okay, so yeah, it must have been maybe my second year. Uh huh. Uh, kind of exploring and working with Susanna when right. I met you. Yeah. So can you explain to the audience what essentially, what, 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 what happens during this sort of creative process when you're asked to come in and you're asked to, you know, you're, you're part of a, 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 a ballet company and you're asked to participate in a festival fringe, right? A fringe, yeah. right? What, well, what is that like? I mean, um, if you can describe that for us. So, um, well, how, how I actually um, kind of came, uh, came on board with it, with the project, uh, with the production. Um, again, like yourself, I had a message um, sent to me by email from Susanna. <laughs> and I just thought, what, oh, what request is this? Um, I've never had a request like that before, um, you know, just to kind of go up, create and, and present work at the fringe and I thought well it's an incredible opportunity um, and I thought it's worth exploring and I think at this point I, I think I was a soloist in the company so I've been there a few years kind of knew how things were going so I thought you know it's time to kind of expand um, a lot and learn even more from other people outside of the company rather than just people bring, um, being brought into the company so um, obviously got everything signed off and I was able to partake um, and I remember it being it's a bit of a funny story because the year I did it um, I remember that summer, I had just been in Florence 
um, with a, this Cicchetti diploma um, DVD, which I had helped filmed um, for the two years before that. So the whole team were out there kind of helping promote that and being part of the whole festival there. Then I remember I had to catch a fly to Edinburgh after that, but there were so many um, delays and a connecting flight. I'll never forget, this was on the Sunday. I arrived in Edinburgh at something at like five or 6 p.m. in the evening. Um, and you probably can relate, you get to Edinburgh Airport during the fringe and it is carnage. Like it, there is so many delays. You can't, it, it probably took me about an hour to get out of the car park itself. So by the time I, uh, I saw, met up with Susanna, uh, I think it's Dance Space, which is a right. um, dance kind of headquarters in Edinburgh. That's right. It must have been about seven, eight o'clock. Now, this is arriving that evening. I've never, I had never um, formally met Susanna mm -hmm. on the phone. We had to create something, and the performance was the next morning. Oh, jeez! Friday. <laughs> I was going out right, of my I understand. I understand. I thinking, okay, I've just arrived from Italy. Mm -hmm. All my luggage, meeting Susanna. Dancing after just being on two or three planes, having a, having to create and work ready for the the performance the next day, and then that would have been the Monday to the Friday. So I thought, okay, calm down, Brandon, it's fine. So I met Susanna, and instantly, as soon as I met her, she was so calm and collected, and she knew how to approach it straight away. Like instead of freaking out, like I was freaking out, mm -hmm. she with so many great tools to work with in the studio in that space of time, which really, really kind of um, added to the work I presented that week. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought we were gonna get there, we were just gonna kind of, you know, do a few steps, that works, that doesn't work, and then mm -hmm. boom, next performance. And it really wasn't. It was such an experimenting time across the whole week, and I, I learned quite a lot. Um, I actually asked Susanna to send me some notes across, and I've got some words from here, which she, I, I mean, I couldn't have put it better myself at all. Her words are great, but uh -huh. here's what she says. She says, um, my goals are to provide the dancer with the knowledge of techniques they will be able to use to stimulate their creativity. I teach a dancer how to articulate the creative process, how to discipline it, and how to transform it into clear signs. I teach a dancer how to eliminate from the creative process resistance and obstacles caused by their own bodies and minds. I help them to maximize their self-esteem. I challenge their imagination and inquisitive mind. And I, 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 I couldn't write something better myself on how on, on, on what she passed to me on that yeah. Sunday evening in Edinburgh before what I thought was going to be a daunting week of performances but it was it was we workshopped it um, almost each time between the fe the feedback she gave me and going right. into performance um, she really transformed the studio into a very kind of a, a lab setting you know as if you know she was a scientist at hand and mm -hmm. I, I don't call myself the test subject but I was kind of responding and working and being manipulated in different ways on on the tools she was giving me right well you, you said a lot there I, I want to comment on um, the statement um, because in some respects that is what that is what I've been doing, but in a very different way, right? But before I could even get to this part, this point where I'm interviewing you right now, I had to go through a lot of what you just described because I had a lot of resistance, I had a lot of blocks, and I had a lot of fears, right? And let's sort of double back to when you, you know, when you fly into to Edinburgh, right? You have no idea what's going on. Now, I had already... I mean, I'm American, I've lived in Switzerland for many years. And so I had conquered my fear of the unknown, right? At least in this particular area. And then I was able to, you know, travel to different places and do the same thing. I had not really accomplished that in dance, even though I had been a dancer for many, many years. So I appreciate um, what she's laid out and what she's doing, because let's say if you are, if you are a pro, you should be able to come in and at a moment's notice create something as quickly as in a day. I think and how the approach from my point of view is um, obviously being a dancer in one of the Royal Ballet companies here uh -huh. in the UK, 
we heavily work with repertoire, which is already right. set, or we work for a long amount of time with a choreographer, workshopping it, creating it, however mm -hmm. that choreographer wants to work. So we're not necessarily coming in and always working in the way Susanna would. This was mm -hmm. a completely new, explore, uh, you know, explorative kind of adventure for me. Mm -hmm. And I think I kind of knew that when I was signing up for it, but at the same time, I didn't know what was going to lie ahead. So I, I thought I've just got to throw myself in at the deep end and you learn by being uncomfortable. And this is, and, and you get better that way. So this was my way of getting to that next stage, I suppose in my own career um, mm. and creative mind in order to progress. This is what I needed to do. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm going to give you another analogy. Um, I'm very much into music. Um, I was, or during this time, I've been listening to a lot of artists live um, on, in concert. And there's one particular performance by Jamiroquai, who, and this, uh, this guy's been around for a long time. I think this concert is in Coachella, and he introduces Snoop Dogg as sort of, I guess, as a guest during this particular song. And Snoop Dogg does such a great job. I mean, he has, he's only given a short period of time. But, I, and he's, of course, he's smoking weed at the same time. And he does it with such ease, right? I'm, sa I'm saying to myself, well, how long did they meet and decide and how it was going to go? So then when you listen to him, you know, uh, deliver the lyrics, a lot of the lyrics he's already done in previous songs. Right. But because he's like, OK, I'll throw this in. It's almost like sort of I call it a knife and fork toolbox kind of a thing where he's not only familiar with the tools, he's familiar with the toolbox and how he can move the parts or the different tools together to create or to unlock yeah. certain things. And I think that is a very key thing for the dancer. And in fact, I say this and I'm going to throw this out to you. If dancers were trained this way, right, they could really look at the repertoire almost every day and see something different and measure that against anything else that's going on during the show, right? So, for example, you're on the stage. Um, when my, 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 my uh, niece was on stage at Radio City, and I saw how big the stage was. I was like, oh my God, I could do like a whole lot of things just looking at that one <laughs> light in the corner. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, there's so much to work from. And I think, um, I mean, it's a roundabout way of describing in a different way what, what the concept is. But, you know, sometimes you'll not, you, you won't have time. Sometimes you won't understand the choreographer. Mm. Sometimes, you know, there are all these constrictions, just like in life. Right, yeah. just like in life. And, or, you know, you don't have any money and you want to put on the show, right? So you have to figure out. And, and you know, I, I use this and it's a good segue to what's happening with COVID, right? You know, we are now communicating via Zoom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're talking about dance. Um, we're getting information to people about, you know, what is possible in, yeah. in this situation. Yeah. And there's been movement. Tell us more about your background, how you came oh, up. Yeah, so I am from Bradford, West Yorkshire originally, so the north of England. Um, and I started dancing when I was about, about seven, eight years old, mm -hmm. um, just kind of normal Saturday classes. And then that kind of progressed a little bit more. I, I picked up a few more classes a week. Um, um, I trained at two different dance schools, one called Stage 84, and then the other one, which was more of a stage school. And then I changed and went to more of an intense performing arts school called the Niger School of Dance. Mm -hmm. um, and while I was there, I also studied BBO dance training. So then from there, I went to a summer school called the Yorkshire Ballet Seminars, and it was um, a director of that summer school who's a former uh, principal ballerina of the Royal Ballet called Marguerite Porter. She pushed me towards the Royal Ballet School. Um, she was just saying, as you know, a, 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 a young boy to get enough strength and stamina and, mm -hmm. and everything to, you know, progress, um, you should be doing class every day. So, um, and, and she was right, you know, it's, it's, I suppose it's that way of just as you're growing to kind of, you know, mm -hmm. feed 
one feeds another as it as it goes along so I mean I don't come from a ballet background at all I've got an older sister but she's more academic so we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into so I remember she had this uh, uh, audition for me at the school um, I was 14 at this point and I went down uh, for the audition with my mum. I'll never forget, it was a Tuesday, and they said, we'd like you to join, and can you come on Saturday? So it was <laughs> a very, you know, very quick well, look, thing. Well, 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 let's go back. So so you started, you started at what age? You, did you say like seven? I was about eight years old. Eight about years eight. old. And what mm-hmm. prompted the first lesson? This is what I'm curious in, like, you know, did your so, parents say, Oh, you really, you know, we need to do something with him or he's, you know, running around or what, what's going yeah, on? I just started dancing around a lot. Uh-huh. I just started dancing around a lot. We used to go to the pantomime, um, which I'm sure you all know, it's a big British tradition, but um, the, <laughs> the pantomime every Christmas. Um, I see, okay. Yeah, so it's... Um, yeah, so it's not it's normally a Christmas tradition that happens in theatres up and down the UK, um, mm-hmm. and used to go traditionally every Christmas. And I think I was just kind of in a, a trance with the kind of the stage movements and the performers and the lights and the costumes and just so much of it really appealed to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then between, I've always been into music. I still am, still am. So obviously music videos, and you just see bits and bobs on TV at the time. I'd never even I'd never seen dance live on stage. We never used to go to the theater to actually see dance right. or even plays or even musicals. It was really just a pantomime. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I just started dancing around a lot and expressing myself at home, wearing holes in my socks, which really obviously annoyed my mom. Right. Right, sure. <laughs> uh, so she just did something about it and sent me to a, a ballet school, Saturday classes. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Now is your uh, mom and dad, are they both from the UK or they are, um from somewhere so else. My mum is from, um, my mum was born and bred in Yorkshire and so is my dad, but my dad's parents um, came over from Jamaica. Right. Uh, in, yeah, in the Windrush period. Um, wow. Yeah, and, and and does that inform any of your, let's say, how can I put this? Does that background that you have, does that inform your dance or can you see that now or is it something that's irrelevant uh, for what you're... Um, no, it's not. It's nothing that I, I I never ignore where I've come from or what my mm-hmm. background is. Um, but equally, I've never used it um, to get further in what mm-hmm. I want to do. Um, you know, I suppose race and culture. There's a, there's kind of a big a big you know conversation there, um, and you know, and discrimination, all that kind of stuff. But I've mm-hmm. never felt I've needed to use, or I've never definitely wanted to use my color to ever lead the way forward on what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, just so you, well, just so you know, uh, in the U.S. it might be that we're still in that space, right? Yeah. And so, you know, um, that's a discussion for maybe another time um, because there are a lot of people that use that as a, as a way to, I wouldn't necessarily say move themselves forward. I think it's more of an expression sort of thing <laughs> because, uh the dance world is fairly small right (laughs) and you can move forward and i think maybe this is why susanna's uh opportunity was so important because i knew in the u.s that, that my opportunities were limited right based on what i had accomplished how you know my age (laughs) <laughs> and my experience and my context. Mm. I had to go a different route, really, in almost every way in order to even be sitting here with you right now having a conversation. Yeah. And, and, and that, that festival was a huge breakthrough because, again, I was, I was in new space. I was with new people, um, environment, <laughs> challenge but to the body and mind. And then I was, you know, a new audience just to see what, well, how are they going to respond to me? Yeah. Well, going to the Royal Ballet School, it was a change. That was probably my first big change of everything. I was going from doing, what, two, three classes a week to class every day at a boarding school, the Royal Ballet School, you know, in, mm-hmm. in an old teaching lodge in the middle of Richmond Park. So it couldn't have been more different from the background I had growing up in Bradford, West Yorkshire, down to London. <laughs> so it's a, it's a boarding school. It's, it's a boarding, boarding school. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, what's good about the what the Royal Ballet or that system, or let's just put it this way, 
in the UK, you guys are heavily, I don't wanna say heavily funded, but you're definitely funded and the systems, there are systems for music and dance and, you know. Yeah, we've got the Arts Council funding. Yeah, yes, yeah, and yes. that works and supports, a, uh, you know, quite a, a large uh, quantity of organizations up and down the country. Right, and I think it's smart because they realize that, I mean, let's say, for example, when the Queen gives a parade or some sort of public, a mm. lot of these guys, I'm assuming, come up through the different programs that are funded by the government, right? I mean, they yeah, usually I think, utilize lots of musicians, lots of people, yeah, you know. Yeah. I think also with having, obviously, um, a royal family here, they a lot of the members hold um, uh, positions within the companies like for instance the Birmingham Royal Ballet our president is um, his Royal Highness Prince Charles right. and it was a few years ago we were presented and we went to the we went to Buckingham Palace and performed for him because right. we are one of his charities as him obviously being the president of our organization and that's right. across a lot of companies especially if they have a royal you know in their title you know um, right. royal charter uh, yeah that's fantastic well let's go um in a little uh, more with regard to the leadership, the current leadership of uh, the Birmingham, the, the Birmingham Royal Ballet. Man, let me get the name right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> currently, your artistic director is Carlos Acosta. Indeed right? it is. And, and you're going to explain more about who he is, but I'm just going to give a cursory. Uh, Mr. Acosta is like perhaps one of the best and well res well known and re well respected um, ballet dancers and choreographers in the, in the business and i heard of, i actually i mean i'd heard of him many years ago but i didn't start seeing him in action until youtube right, right? yeah right so you know as the videos get traded around you're like oh who's this dude <laughs> <laughs> he's the new dude on the block <laughs> right right and i think the respect was a this is what I knew. I knew that Cuban, there was a strong Cuban uh, ballet or dance um, presence, right? Mm -hmm. or, or they train very, very well in Cuba. And so, you know, just following his story and, and sort of his trajectory, et cetera, et cetera, I think is, is, is very exciting. And, and perhaps you can tell us more about what, what's going on. Yeah, so, um, yeah, as you said, Carlos Costa, one of the greatest dancers of his generation, he is our new appointed director. Um, before that, we had Sir David Bintley, who was director of the company for about uh, just uh, 24, 25 years, um, who did so much great work with the company. And I, I mean, I've, I'll always be forever thankful on a personal note for my trajectory through David Bintley's time, going from employment through school all the way up to principal status, all mm -hmm. with um, him, which again, I'm, I'm forever privileged and honored to have, have gone through that. Um, but moving forward, um, when it came to light, Carlos was gonna be our new director. I think that really the whole ballet world, if not dance world, really zoned in and listened to what was going on because it was such huge news when it came out. And I mean, obviously, as a company, we knew before it was going to be officially announced. Um, so it was just kind of containing a lot of excitement. But also, I think, obviously, there's some reservations out in the public, you know, how's it going to go for the company? How's it going to keep moving forward? You know, Will Carlos um, keep progressing the repertoire and everything? You know, just everything, all the parts of the company, will that all keep going? Right. Um, and personally speaking, I really do think he will. Um, I mean, he's so well known, but he's very, he's got such a great drive and discipline, obviously, to get him where he is today. Mm -hmm. um, but he's got such a great drive and discipline and enthusiasm. I, it's, it's all these elements are part of the equa equation to succeed. And I think he, especially in this COVID-19 environment, all companies are finding it very, very difficult right now. I think no matter where you are in the company, um, but he's still determined, even when we have our Zoom meetings and you know, so on and so forth, he's determined to, for us to be performing in some capacity um, as soon as possible. Sure, um, can. sure. And that's fantastic. I mean, uh, I think he made the cover of the June Dance Magazine uh, in the US. 
I don't know if you saw that. I mean, I have to yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah, that beautiful pink suit. <laughs> yes, there you go. Yeah, it was an interview. <laughs> <Not a pink suit. laughs> I, I just received the cop, not a copy, but um, the heads up, if you will. Yeah. I think it's exciting because he brings a different perspective Completely. to dance. And, Completely. you know, who who knows? I mean, there, there are people like him and, and other types of other leaders and, and, and other sectors as soon as you make the announcement or as soon as you hear the announcement, you say, okay, you, you know that eventually you're gonna buy a ticket to see what he has to you know, to present. See. I mean, it's really unfortunate at the moment because um, due to some of his other commitments, he still had a tour with Acosta Dancer because he's still the director of uh, I understand. the mm -hmm. company. So he still had um, a UK tour planned. Uh, well, they were, they were performing it currently, um, I think, from January onwards. Mm -hmm. um, they even had to cut that short. Um, but it was in January when he actually started his role. So obviously, He's on hold. this situation has hit pretty soon. And even though he's set plans in place for what we were going to be doing, we are going to be dancing his production of Don Quixote at the end of the season. Right. Um, he brought choreography by Goya Montero and he was going to be performing alongside us with Alexandra Ferry as a guest artist at the same time. So, and that was just already within the first um, few months of him mm -hmm. being the director. However, now there's a spanner in the works <laughs> um, that won't go ahead at the moment. So even though it's very exciting and we're still looking forward to a really bright future, it's all kind of just a bit delayed at the moment. <laughs> Well, I mean, I see it as this is this is an opportunity for you, me, everyone that's been on hold to really use the time in a productive manner, in a wise manner, because there's always things that you can train yourself in. Right. Yeah, always. Right. So, um, you know, just the 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 method of training that you just spoke about with regard to uh, dance forms and Susanna. Mm. This is the kind of thing, let's say, if you needed to choreograph something in a day, yeah, you know, what would you do, right? Like, yeah. even to pose those questions, yeah. even though you're not dancing for anybody, right? And um, that kind of thinking or training, I think, helps the mental stuff, the mental mm. game. I mean, do you ever, are you ever afraid when you're on stage? I mean, is there any kind of fear when you're performing? Um. I mean, generally we've rehearsed quite a lot before we get out there and there's always some sort of, I suppose, nerves of, of just how it's going to go, you know, uh -huh. either how it's received or just if your body's going to feel great for you to kind of keep going and, you know, show your best because let's face it, we all have on and off days in terms of our bodies and muscles and all that kind of stuff. Um, I never feel afraid though um, because as through my trajectory in the company, um, I was really fortunate enough to be given a lot of big roles um, early on. Mm -hmm. So I never felt I was lying, I suppose, I, I suppose dormant for some time before coming to those roles where you were in more in the spotlight. It was almost a kind of a steady process of building, building that wall for me to kind of stand high on. Um, so again, I was very, I know not everyone's like that, but I was lucky to, keep training constantly year after year my nerves and that being afraid feeling right. um to to actually manufacture it into a very strong kind of giving energy rather than a pulling you know rather than pulling back right another question is that you're rather tall um <laughs> yeah answer so like yeah. let's say for example when you started uh, with the Royal, Royal Ballet School, were you, well, well, how tall were you then? And then let's say, when did the... The, the spurt go. Yeah, because uh, you're really, I, really tall. How tall yeah. are you? Uh, what would that be in, um, it, it, what, you measure in meters over there? Oh, in meters. What, what do you do? Uh, you, no, you're like in the US, right, right, the height, right? You, you do, you're like six. I feel like I'm about six two. Almost. Right, okay, okay, we're on six um, two. You guys convert. <laughs> I think in centimeters, is that about like 180? 186? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, on a good day, <laughs> if I'm not slouching. Um, 
Well, when I went to the Royal Ballet School, I mean, I was very thin and gangly, but I, I didn't have lots of height. But I wasn't one of the tall ones in the year. But it was when I went to the upper school. Um, so I did two years at the lower Royal Ballet School, which uh -huh. is in the boarding school. And then I did um, three years at the upper school, which is in Common Garden, right bang next to the Opera House. On wow. The wow. So yeah, I was there for three years, um, kind of living in different places with, um, you know, uh, people in my year um, and again in incredible years um, I'll never forget the memories and the friends I made um, all dancing around the world you know um, and uh, but that's where my growth really did kind of mm. shoot up a bit more between obviously just the ages of being 16 17 to 19 um, and you know with uh, more dancing and resistance training as well so it all kind of had to coincide and again kind of going back to when I first went to Royal Bayer School to do class every day to get enough strength in order to come my height. Um, even when I joined the company at 19, I was still growing upwards and outwards. Um, <laughs> so I was given really nice roles um, at the same time as trying to work out what my body was doing every year, you know? <laughs> right. So, yeah. I think it's fantastic because one of the things that uh, I remember the most was your height. When I met you, and I was like, okay, what is she going to do? Like, what is she going to do with him? Like, in my mind, right? You know, I'm short. I'm a short guy. So <laughs> I, I, you know, and I never performed. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it, I'd say it's semi-professional because I was in a company and we got paid, but I had a day job, right? And I started late. Right. Okay. But it gave me enough time to realize what, let's say, if I were in a, uh, let's say, in an alley or something like that, what I might be, lim you know, my limitations. Mm. Right. So I, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very good dancer, but I knew that, yeah, like, I was like, oh my height, like I couldn't lift, couldn't do any lifts. Right. <laughs> the lifts. I would have to be in the gym 24 7. You know what I mean? I couldn't do all of my other things. If I, you know, that was part of, <laughs> I'd be only lifted and only dancing, right? right? But I, you know, truth be told, when when you, when I saw you, I said, okay, what is she gonna do? How is she gonna use the height? Is she gonna use the height in the choreography? Is she gonna like, you know, how is how does he move? This is in my mind. You know, how does he move? You know, and he's ballet, so what's gonna, you know, in my mind, all of these things, yeah, yeah, all you know, these questions. Up. And I think that's um, that's part of the the magic, if you will, right? To be able to present yourself, even when you're not dancing, and you you know people already start to form questions about what the experience is going to be like, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's uh, go directly and talk about uh, what's happening with COVID and how it's impacting you. You you talked a little bit about it. Is there any are there any other things that are uh, happening with you specifically because of the situation? Um, what else is happening? So, um, I mean, pretty much from the, the word go into lockdown, the company um, so, uh, give Zoom classes um, so we can still kind of tune in with our normal teachers within the company and other dancers if they if they wish to participate um i mean but as you have probably seen there are so many classes online so i don't you know we're spoiled for any kind of classes and you know all these kind of groups that are going on at the moment in all kinds of genre it's it's actually quite incredible to see um dancers and former dancers um all around the world presenting their skills and their classes online. So that's um, really incredible. Um, personally speaking, I still keep up my um, ballet training. Mm. I've reduced it a little bit um, each week rather than doing six days a week. Um, I do um, uh, about three or four times a week, um, kind of as much as I can within the space I have. And then I also do my own fitness training aside from that. Um, so involving other um, weighted exercises and like, like gym training um to kind of keep that going and hit classes um i've also i spoke a little bit earlier um when i first started working with susanna that i was in florence um with a chiquetti 
diploma celebration. Um, and Enrico, just for if anyone who doesn't know, Enrico Cicchetti um, was one of the great ballet masters of all time. And he has his own, he had, has his own method of training. And I um, was lucky enough to be involved with some other dancers from the company and the Royal Ballet in um, a DVD that we made, which is on the diploma level of this method. So I'm currently watching that DVD, uh, obviously me and the others dancing in it, and restudying it. Because uh, even though I filmed it, none of us actually have the diploma. <laughs> so <laughs> I know, I wish I could just kind of submit the DVD and then say, give me the diploma. Uh, but no, we actually do need to do the exam. So I've gone back and I'm learning all of that again. There was loads, there's loads of exercises. So I'm um, kind of really trying to get um, that underneath my belt again. Um, also, I I have a um, a co-collaborative collection with a dancewear brand here in the UK called Dancies. So I've been working alongside them, um, keeping content going, and also um, some extra designs for um, two more garments that I've got coming out, um, which is um, always exciting. Um, and also. Um, part of my training when I was at the Niger School of Dance was through BBO Dance, um, which I'm one of the patrons of. So I've been working alongside them um, as, as well as as well as we've just celebrated our 90th anniversary um, of the organization. We um, I've been working with them on an online kind of um, well, we haven't released it yet, but a bit of an online competition stroke brand new ballet for the students of the organization so uh, just to be clear the the organization is called bd bdo or what is it? bbo so it BBO. was originally the british ballet organization mm -hmm. uh, and then it was rebranded um uh, a few years ago to bbo dance because the organization now specializes in not just ballet but also musical theater and right. tap so it's got quite a few genres on right. it okay Hey, look, it's, I mean, you're busy. You're busy. It's not like I you're keep myself busy. Yeah. You're busy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. I mean, it, it makes me um, look forward to when we can go back to normal um, and fly around and do all these different things in different cities like we had been before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But hopefully this time it's a little bit more organized and collaborative and, and, and aware of everyone else do in the space, you know, um, and I guess, you know, not everybody can think and be that way because if that were the case, you know, there's no variety. But yeah. I've always been interested and curious about what people are up to, right? So this yeah. is yeah. why yeah. The, the interview series, uh, one of my friends calls it the lockdown series, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this has spawned, you know, this interview series, which is on BitChute and also YouTube. And um, I want to thank you for making no. uh, yourself available. Yeah, no, it's great. And I, I look forward, like you said, for things to go back to normal. Um, one of the great things I was really looking forward to um, coming up soon was to work with Susanna. Unfortunately, that is all being postponed at the moment, um, but it just means that it'll be bigger and better than ever. And hopefully from the last time I worked with her, which was two years ago, mm -hmm. um, she will have seen improvement in me in terms of what I can bring to the table. Yes. Um, because she's really incredible to work with, as you know, and she she knows so much. She has so much information to give. Um, and even though she's got so much information to give, she's still open to learning, which um, I find really um, intriguing for someone who yeah. has a lot of tools already. Okay. Well, we'll make sure all of that information is in the description box. Any information that you want to give me in terms of your other projects, feel, for, uh, feel free to forward them to me. And, um, you know, with that, I will conclude. Have a great uh, rest of your day. And you, and you. And, 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 and we'll speak soon, okay? Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. See you. Bye.